All right, so in this lecture, we're gonna talk about alcohol metabolism. So first, alcohol metabolism, as you probably know, occurs mostly in the liver, and it operates via zero-order kinetics. So what does that mean? It means that the rate of ethanol metabolism is independent of the concentration of ethanol. So the takeaway from that is, is whether there's a small amount of ethanol or a large amount of ethanol, the rate of metabolism stays the same. And so, for example, if, if someone has a heavy night of drinking, larger alcohol cons consumption, that does not increase the rate of ethanol metabolism. So alcohol is metabolized by two enzymes, alcohol dehydrogenase and then subsequently acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. What's really important to remember is that both of these enzymatic reactions result in increased production of NADH. And as a result of that, that depletes the free NAD plus available. And this is really important to remember, and, we'll, and you'll see why on the next slide. So this starts with ethanol, and it gets converted by alcohol dehydrogenase into acetaldehyde. And this diagram is from your book, and what I would add in is that it uses up NAD plus to give you NADH to give you this acetaldehyde. Now acetaldehyde is actually more toxic than ethanol. It actually is responsible for a lot of the symptoms of hangovers. And so this has to get subsequently converted into acetate. And I would cross this out in your book and add in acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, like we say here in the text. And again, that takes a free NAD plus and converts it into an NADH. So by converting acetaldehyde to acetate, you also yield NADH. And then acetate is the final product here of this series of reactions. Now, as a result of depleting the free NAD+, the body's going to try to compensate for that. So what it'll do is oxidize NADH to NAD+, via a, a number of reactions here that we'll talk about. And a lot of these reactions are involved in gluconeogenesis. And so as a result of that, what you have is decreased gluconeogenesis, which can result in hypoglycemia. So high levels of alcohol metabolism can cause gluconeogenesis, which then results in hypoglycemia because you you've depleted the liver's ability to synthesize glucose that can be available for peripheral tissues. So the reactions that are affected here is first pyruvate. So we'll come down here and we'll start with pyruvate, which is the end product of glycolysis. Now this figure, you may recognize it. It's a modified version of the figure we, sh we showed you in the gluconeogenesis lecture. And so you start, you have pyruvate here, which is one of the end products of glycolysis. And the idea in glycolysis obviously is that it would go to the mitochondria get converted to acetyl-CoA and enter the citric acid cycle. For gluconeogenesis, pyruvate enters in, but then it gets converted into oxal acetate, and then it goes on, again, one of these two pathways that we discussed in that lecture, on its path to being converted back to glucose via gluconeogenesis. The problem is, is if you have high levels of NADH, such as from high levels of alcohol metabolism, lactate dehydrogenase will use that NADH and actually convert pyruvate into lactate. And so what happens is you have high levels of lactate, which can then result in a lactic acidosis. And then by converting pyruvate to lactate at high levels, you decrease the amount of pyruvate available, which severely decreases the flux of gluconeogenesis. Also that, you know, you can convert this NADH into a free NAD+. Another reaction affected by this is you can convert oxal acetate back to malate because you use this free NADH. Malate dehydrogenase will take this free NADH and convert it into NAD plus yielding malate. And again, this is the reverse of gluconeogenesis, which again would further decrease the flux of gluconeogenesis. And then the other reaction here that's affected is dihydroxyacetone phosphate actually gets converted back to glycerol 3 phosphate because this also uses up an NADH to give you an NAD plus. And so then glycerol 3 phosphate can get converted into glycerol. Now, all of this can also contribute to a fatty liver. And the reason for that is, is remember acetate is the final product of alcohol metabolism that can get converted into acetyl-CoA, which is then used to synthesize fatty acids. You combine fatty acids with glycerol and then you get triglycerides. And this actually explains why someone who's a chronic alcoholic can develop a very fatty liver over time. Another result of having decreased gluconeogenesis and hypoglycemia is a person can develop ketoacidosis. 
And again, this can be a result of the increased production of acetyl-CoA, which is used to make ketone bodies. It also occurs from the high levels of NADH that can inhibit the citric acid cycle, which would then also lead to ketogenesis. And because remember, that the purpose of the citric acid cycle, or one of the end products, is producing NADH that can then be used by the electron transport chain to produce ATP. And remember, a number of those enzymes in the citric acid cycle actually experience feedback inhibition by high levels of NADH, so you'll decrease the flux of the citric acid cycle. Again, like we said, you can have lactic acidosis from taking this free NADH and converting it into lactate, hypoglycemia from de decreased gluconeogenesis. The other thing that contributes to developing a fatty liver is you have decreased fatty acid catabolism because of the negative feedback from high levels of NADH. Now, lastly here, just some drugs that affect alcohol metabolism. So fomepazole inhibits alcohol dehydrogenase. So it comes in here and inhibits this conversion from ethanol to acetaldehyde. And it's actually the antidote to either methanol or ethylene glycol poisoning. Ethylene glycol is found in antifreeze. And alcohol dehydrogenase also metabolizes methanol and ethylene glycol into much more toxic substances. And so you inhibit their breakdown into much more toxic components. The other drug here is disulfiram. This inhibits acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. So this comes over here and inhibits this enzyme. So it blocks the conversion of acetaldehyde into acetate. So you actually have increased levels of acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde as a result of that, as we say here. And the reason for that is, remember, acetaldehyde is more toxic than ethanol, and it causes many of the symptoms of a hangover. So by inhibiting this enzyme, you produce a, a pretty serious and terrible hangover. And so the thought here is this is actually used to help patients that are trying to quit drinking alcohol. And so the net effect is sort of a psychological effect here, where you deter someone from drinking alcohol in the future because it, they would create this terrible hangover symptoms as a result of increasing the levels of acetaldehyde. Thank you for watching this sample lecture from our online biochemistry video course. You can access the entire video course and the corresponding outline format textbook on our website using the link in the description below.